Yeah. So you can start again. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon and thank you everyone for tuning in, registering with the Early Childhood Association and APA uh, for what we believe is the kickstart of uh, a historic moment for us. The APA workshops uh, commence in March, continue in April. We have six stellar educationalists uh, leading very, very important topics. Uh, concepts that will work for you in your classrooms and I'm pretty sure you're going to have many many takeaways. Of course we begin with the bang. Uh, like everything we do at a a ECA and APA we have a very dynamic, charming, beautiful, enterprising, knowledgeable uh, Kusum Kanwar. Um, you know when I looked through her resume I was almost embarrassed. I said how do I sum up three decades of experience in the education space, donning pretty much every hat I know. Uh, if there's someone who's been there, done it, she's the lady. Um, she's been a trustee, she's been a principal, she's a managing director. Uh, a kangaroo kids, of course, a very well-known preschool chain. She's been parts of high school. She's on every committee that I know. So uh, whether it's ECA, the National Core Committee, or whether it's APA, the National Core Committee, Global Ambassador, for a small, micro, medium, and small enterprises. Um, I actually ask her, what do you take every morning to have that kind of energy and passion for doing what you do? She's been on webinars all week. She's uh, concluded a very successful one yesterday. And of course, she's here on Friday on time, ready, looking as charming as ever, and she has a lot to offer. I have attended one of her sessions on social emotional learning. And for me as an educator, being in this industry, there were many takeaways. I urge you to listen. I urge you to take notes. I urge you to ask questions. We have a lot of colleagues, uh, you know, uh, Kusumam, we had actually uh, 78 signups and uh, 25 were going to. We do have a connectivity issue, but listen, this is the pandemic. This is us in the virtual world. We cope, we adapt, uh, and we're doing it with a smile. So for those who've tuned in, please feel free to ask questions. Um, Kusumam, over to you and charm us with all that you have for us this afternoon. So greetings, hello, welcome everyone. Thank you, Fatima, you know, for uh, for your kind, generous uh, introductions. And uh, it's always such a pleasure to be, um, you know, with you. And for rolling out, um, you can say, you know, this, this first in this April series, uh, part two, uh, Association for Primary Education and Research. Thank you so much. It's a huge gratitude to our president uh, for uh, of ECA APA, Dr. Swati Popat Watts, for giving all of us this platform to learn and to collaborate. Ms. Farzana Dohagwala, and to you again, Ms. Fatima, for relentlessly working on the series to take off today. So we kickstart, uh, you know, this series with a very important um, and pertinent topic uh, of social emotional learning building for life success so we'll call it uh, SELs also um, you know along the way and in, in a lot of places um, you know it is going to be SELs or SECs that social uh, emotional competencies so as educators uh, we at APER you know work on the premise that children you know in the foundation years are India's future so how do we put children at the center of everything while designing for change? So we believe in dreams, which are seeds of transformation and innovation and the importance of dreaming big and acting on it, you know, with the new age mindsets and skills, both for our children and also for our adults, right? Here, the teachers, parents, or any other professional who's uh, joining us today. So thus my discussions will uh, you know, revolve around new age skill sets for all. What type of education system can encourage a good mix of both, you know, the right brain activities, that's your, your arts, your empathy, it would be your resilience, your social emotional learning, that which teaches us to be human beings first. And this learning impacts, as we all know, the left brain activities you know, it could be your sciences, your math, your coding, your tech, 
in order to stay relevant in the 21st century. Now, so we do need to create something that has a positive and a lasting impact. That is, if we want to see systematic changes in this world, then we need to change the mindsets. And that can happen only through education and through social emotional learning. So there are many studies out there that show us how teaching SELs, the social emotional learning in foundation years, uh, right, can be uh, beneficial for children in the adulthood as well. So one can never teach a child by standing in front of a whiteboard and telling the child to be more empathetic, uh, think critically, um, because they need role models, right? Children love to learn through methods they enjoy, uh, like we are we are doing in, in you know every school and uh, you know at Aper schools as well. So we believe in the narratives, we believe in stories, we believe in games, we believe in outcomes using these methods that have incredible outcomes. And by setting ourselves up, you know, working on achieving social emotional competencies is the way forward. Now more than ever, as I share statistics by McKinsey Global Institute that tech and social skills are to see higher demand now. Net increase in tech skills will be 3.3% higher, followed by social and emotional skills to increase by 0.9%. <clears throat> I'm sure we're going to you know, cross the 3.3% of tech skills soon. So whereas the higher cognitive and the basic cognitive will be minus 1.0 each. So, do, you know, do we actually uh, get that, that, you know, the emotional, social emo emotional skills are, you know, on the rise higher than the cognitive and basic cognitive skills. So, uh, my dear learners and all the participants, thank you for your enthusiasm and for being here. Why do we need a SEC, right? Why do we need, why, why do I say we need just a SEC, that is a social emotional competency to brace and cope everyday life. So as worry impacts physical and emotional well-being, sometimes too much of worry can cause us stress, leading to burnout as well. Equally, not only for adults, even for children. So why teachers need social emotional skills? And what do educators with SECs or social emotional competencies do? They enhance students' capacity to integrate skills, attitudes, behaviors and to deal effectively and ethically you know building life success for each other for each one of them right and as uh, you know each child's life success is different from the other no two children uh you know their successes or what they uh you know what the blueprint is uh is, is going to be same it's it's all new it's all unique to them so the many stories of children building for life successes unfolds. So there's a lot of takeaway for every adult who's there or every child who's going to get impacted by this. So let's get started. I'm sharing my screen now, uh, Fatima. And uh, do let me know if you can see that. So is this visible, Fatima? Absolutely. Thank yep. you so thank much. You. It's looking thank good. You. And thank <laughs> you so much for the beautiful introduction and all the participants who've tuned in. We'd love to see what you're feeling about it. So some claps, some thumbs ups would be great motivation for all of us. So why do we say that, you know, why we as teachers need uh, social emotional competencies? It's more important, you know, than ever, ever before. So if you want education and you want social education to happen, to change an entire generation in the next 15 years. So that's the kind um, you know, of responsibility we all have. We need to learn and teach social emotional skills and competencies. So what if we can change an entire generation in the next uh, 15 years? I'm saying if, but we need to change that. You know, a generation that is kind, that's compassionate, that empathetic, you know, who would be able to think more critically, sit around the table and solve problems peacefully, be human. Will this lead to life success? What if I tell you, yes, 
and we have the power to create and steer this generation. Now, how can we do it? It's simple, you know, it's called education. It's not only any other type of education, it is social emotional education. So social emotional education for building life successes. Yes, that's true. Now it means children, you know, teaching children best values. Our pre-COVID education system has already had a huge shake. Now the children need skills that will get them ready to brace for the future. We need, uh, or we teach, uh, you know, math, we teach science, we teach literature. Now, can I ask you something here? Are we ever teaching or were we ever taught to be human beings? And this is what, you know, social emotional learning does. It teaches us and children to be human beings first. It means teaching children the best values for a successful life. Now the practice and value of social emotional learning. So I'm going to tell you, uh, because I'm going to tell you a lot of stories today. So let me start with this 89 year old uh, grandfather's uh, you know, story about his wish for his grandchildren. You might think he wished them, you know, a successful career, a great health, uh, you know, great education, maybe even riches, but no. His response was, I want them to be able to get up each time they fall down. Isn't that what we want, you know, for all our children with the karmic or biological, the strength of character, the skills of resilience, a warm toughness? Sadly, we don't see it much around, right? They, you know, sometimes they may lack fortitude, some, um, you know, maybe insecure, uh, they bully their peers and still many may seem paralyzed by their own fears and evidently stand by indifferently you know to whatever is happening whatever is wrong uh, you know happening around them or the wrongdoing we are providing conscious academic nourishment you know in our schools right we are doing reading writing arithmetic right take the case of prevailing times now our parents of primary middle and high schools worried about the children missing out on the academic nurturing yes and what about the emotional skills and what's more important so it's it's up to you to um, you know think and probably you can put it on the chat and we can take these uh, thoughts later so in the pre covid times too many children were not taught the skills to be empathetic or caring they were not taught to manage their emotions. That can teach diligence to connect with uh, people, the social skills, right? So many a times we see, uh, you know, a lot of social media uh, posts and read some posts and messages uh, where we see people who are disconnected or, you know, um, not content and they're angry. Some turn into violence against communities and themselves. So there are reports of verbal abuse, you know, on social media. We are rude sometimes on social media as well to our colleagues and friends as well. So many incidences to court. Uh, there are lots, but let's not get into that. Uh, you know what I mean. So the locker room incident, say to the least, right? So it is obvious we need to teach more than the three R's, your reading, writing, and arithmetic. We need to build in life successes for children, reaching the whole child. We need to provide our children with social and emotional learning, the skills for an effective life. Teach awareness of self and others, how to connect with others, how to connect uh, with your own self, you know, to engage in meaningful conversations, even with those that disagree, you know, with them and to make responsible decisions and follow through with those decisions. So in recent years, psychologists and mental health professionals, uh, can I ask Kekisha Anjum to uh, mute herself, please? Yeah. Sorry about that, Professor Ma'am. Uh, participants, if you could mute yourselves, please. It just does create a little bit of a disruption when the speaker is uh, in session. 
Thank you so much, Fatima, for that. So, uh, so, and to make responsible decisions, uh, like I said, and to follow through with those decisions. So in recent years, years, psychologists and mental health professionals, you know, they've warned us that we are in the danger of creating victims by imposing too many anti-bullying laws. So to prevent what? You know, why are we having these anti-bullying laws? To prevent hurtful things that we say to one another. So do we need laws for that? Instead, children need to be taught SEL, social emotional learning skills, so that they have the know and you know they know now uh, and the strength uh, to end this uh, bullying cycle. So you know I think you you can type in your uh, you know thoughts over this, uh, and we can discuss this later. Now there's strength and fortitude, you know, in caring, in being compassionate, in being mindful, whether in our classrooms, whether in our staff rooms, or even in our board rooms, our corporate board rooms. So uh, recall the circle time ritual. It's a great strategy to continue with the morning ritual of circle time, right? Why I'm saying continue because we do this relentlessly, uh, you know, in our preschools, in our early years, and even during, you know, these online teachings, the circle time is continuing. It's a ritual of circle time. I, you know, we need to continue in the primary, middle, high schools too. Why discontinue something that has been practiced in the kindergartens and then just left out in the higher grades. So I speak from experience in high schools. It's worked for us in our K-12 schools. Children of all ages share and talk about what they did last night. Was it fun? Did something upset them? What made them happy? What they look forward to as you know, academic accomplishments you know, and successes. It's on the playground or in the classroom or with each other even thoughts being on their minds. It's like a gathering at the dinner table, if you can visualize that at home, in our homes, where we all gather around a dinner table. So once the children understand the purpose behind these meetings, teachers can use this structure when children experience, you know, anything, any academic or emotional stress or struggles with their peers to learn from each other as well. So that's, you know, peer learning, peer teaching, collaborative uh, learning as well. And what it teaches us is, you know, it, it opens the doors for social emotional learning. Now, this is an extremely powerful process. You know, if you can see eight, nine year olds working together you know, to solve social problems or academic struggles, learning to express empathy and respectfully respectfully actually disagree with one another it's not always uh, necessary that we agree with each other but it has to be respectful disagreement this is not only really true for children but even for adults you know sometimes we we are not respectful of each other even when we want to we agree or we disagree now how sel social emotional learning can bring a better world so this is what sel teaches us it teaches us to be human beings and building life successes for each child. Like I told you in the beginning, life is different, right? So we need to create something that has a positive and lasting impact, right? So if we are able to see systematic changes in this world, then we need to change mindsets that can happen. And it can happen through it can happen through education. And we're talking about the social uh, education or the social emotional learning. So you might ask, you know, where does this start or where do we start? So the answer lies in neuroscience. It tells us about 90% of a child's brain uh, development takes place in the foundation years. So we are repeating every time that SELs, social emotional learning, social emotional competencies need to start right in our early years, right? They need to start with our children. They need to start with our, our adults, that's our parents and teachers. Now, why I'm saying that this is important, um, understand that this period in a child's life, this period is optimal cognitive modifiability of a child. What does that mean? That in this period, the child's personality, character, worldviews, you know, and uh, value systems, they're all being formed. 
So neuroscience actually tells us that if we want a more enlightened adult and keep building on every step of their life success in a human being, this is now and where we need to start. <clears throat> now, there are incredible benefits, uh, you know, and building life successes uh, of SEL in foundation years. So there are many studies out there that show us how social emotional learning in foundation years benefits and assists children in their adulthood. If they start learning social emotional skills from early years itself, you know, but there is no single uh, curriculum actually for social emotional learning. I'm not saying that there isn't a curriculum, <clears throat> but there's nothing in totality, not one single, single curriculum that only focuses on social emotional learning. So as you can never teach a child by standing in front of a whiteboard and telling the child to be more empathetic and think critically, does that work? No. So children love to learn through methods they enjoy. So what better than play? What better than using narratives? What better than using stories, using games and outcomes, you know, using these methods that are just so incredible. So success for each child will mean different things for them. For each child, it's going to be different. So I'll share some stories, uh, you know, uh, of a school that uses an SEL curriculum in their school and outcomes are tremendous. So they have recognized that success means different things to different children. Uh, Fatima, I'm just admitting a few, I think, who are there, or is it uh, just on my chat? Yeah. Able to see them? I'm not able to see them. Yeah, no, no. It was it was this chat, and so if I if I switch on my chat, then I can't change. Yeah, the no, no, I'm just I'm just reminding them of the key points because you've made some really right. important points. Thank I'll, you so much. Yeah, yeah. 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 Now, just a second. All right. Yes. So. Uh, let's try this at home today, right? Uh, you bring out your hand mirror, mirrors, look at yourselves and say something about you. Don't whisper, but say loud enough for you at least to hear, right? So you can try this at home because I'm going to tell you, you know, a story of this girl with the mirror is what I call her. So what success means for her? Six-year-old Jackie, so I've named her Jackie, she was covered in severe, you know, with severe rash and no medicines were working on her to cure her rashes. Now, the teachers shared that they had to clean her, you know, every five to ten minutes uh, for the pus and the blood coming out of her wound, even in, in, in the class, you know. So she was ostracized in the class and didn't have many friends. Now, her parents thought she was possessed you know, by an evil, um, uh, you know, spirit. And the house they lived in was also cursed. And they had decided to move their homes and take her out of school. So uh, this is all what's happening, you know, in the background. But what's happening in the classes, so the first week lesson of the curriculum in that school, that school that teaches SEL, was to teach children to accept themselves. You know, teaching children to like themselves, to appreciate themselves, and through that, accept and appreciate others. So at the end of the week, every child takes the mirror and looks at themselves, and then they share with others what they like about themselves, right? So Jackie uh, would never look at herself in the mirror ever. Uh, you know, however, that particular day in the week, because of the way the teacher explained this and she was seeing this around with uh, you know all the other children who were doing that to themselves and then appreciating others she looked at, at herself in the mirror and her words were like magic to everybody especially for her teachers she said i like my face and this was the first time she said anything positive about herself now that weekend at home you know, her mom saw uh, Jackie look at herself in a full length uh, mirror. You know, she looked at her face. She looked at her hands covered in rash. And she was, she was talking to herself. 
It's okay, she says. No, it's my skin. And she had accepted herself. She's all of six years only. So friends, self-acceptance is the first step to start building our competencies and our SELs. So success for Jackie was accepting herself, appreciating herself, and through that, you know, accept and appreciate others. So now I have uh, my second story, uh, you know, after Jackie and, you know, what success, life success means for her. And like I said, you know, success for every child is going to be different and there are different successes at every step. So it's not that, you know, we're building in SELs and there you get, uh, you know, your life success you've already achieved. No, it's, it's a matter of, you know, each step uh, leading to the next, right? So this second story of Anmol and his bags, and hear this, what success means to him. So one of the tools used by the school and the teacher is to teach children critical thinking and problem solving. Now this was, you know, done uh, with four bags. I do have, uh, you know, the bags here with me as well. I've created my own bags. So my first bag is the character bag. So I put in a character. So I, 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 you know, I did get this little fellow here, uh, or I can also choose to have, um, you know, this little uh, one as my character, you know, character bag, where children drop uh, and create their characters and pop these into the first bag. So this is my first bag. Now, second bag is my setting bag, right? Setting could be uh, anything. It could be a piece of cloth. It could be paper or any setting that, you know, they want to place the character in. So my, uh, so my character uh, would like to go to a coffee ho uh, shop, right? They're going to a coffee shop. So I've, I've created this with a coffee mug, right? Now, um, or it could be also a class or it could be, uh, you know, anywhere in the library. They want to go sit in the playground. It could be anything. Now, my third bag is the problem bag, right? So uh, the problem. So I'm, I've written down, uh, you know, a problem um, that's, and I put it in my problem bag and I can write and put the problem that I'm facing is what the teacher told them, right? And my fourth bag is my solution bag. So to develop thinking skills and why I chose this is because this is a solution, right? And this is the solution that I have. Okay, so these are my four bags. Uh, that's my solution bag as well to develop critical thinking skills. So children come up with solutions for their problems. They have created for their own characters. It's not them. Keep that in mind. It's not them. It's a problem for their character, right? Isn't that wonderful? So, and such a creative way to teach critical thinking and problem solving skills. Well, at the end of the week, a uh, child asks his teacher, Miss, can I take these bags home? So uh, the miss asked him, why do you want to take these bags home, Anmol? Miss, he said, you know, my parents are always fighting and arguing at home. So I think if I take these bags home to them, they can find a solution to their problem. Now, sadly, the teacher did not give the bags to the child uh, you know, for, to take home. And she said, you know what, Anmol, I just have one set. And uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm really sorry, I can't give it to you now. So uh, probably we'll make one for you next week. So however, that weekend, when the parent met the teacher in school, you know, the parent asked the teacher, what did you teach my child last week in school? He's completely changed. So what had happened at home? right a flashback so what had happened was that weekend when his parents were arguing at home and there was you know a big argument going on between both of them and mall you you know who used to be usually hiding in his bedroom you know out of fear and actually he went and confronted his parents and he asked him mom dad what's the problem because if there's a problem let's find a solution to it right now, this is again a six year old. What a moment of enlightenment and success for him. Not just for him, but of course for his parents as well. So just imagine 
if we teach every child in the early years and the primary years to become you know more empathetic become more compassionate to be more kind to sit around the table and solve their problems more peacefully to be more innovative and creative we and they will be contributing to making a better world you know both of us together for ourselves and for them as well So I'm saying, uh, what's inside your bag? Try this bag activity that I I, I just uh, told you about the four bags. Try this bag activity at home. Create a bag story with your children at home and uh, also, you know, on your online schooling as well on what is inside your bag, you know. Uh, so give them a character. Like I said, I gave them a character. I gave them a setting where we sat in a coffee house. So I have a coffee mug here with me. And then I, um, you know, we listed out uh, the problem that the character is having, right? And then we had a solution to it. So let them find a solution, maybe together, right? Together or with you. You can always help them, right? Can you see? Can you see my solution? Um, my little, you know, little solution from my bag. So let them find a solution. You can also ask them to find their own characters. Definitely, uh, a setting, a problem, and a solution, right? You can do it for them, and you can also uh, then pass it on to them. So SEL, social emotional learning, changes the narrative for building life successes, right? For who? Now this is Rahul. All right, so this Rahul, uh, my boy, here's, uh, I've named him Rahul, who teaches us just change our narrative from what's wrong with you to what happened, right? So um, Rahul, we all know of in our, in, in, you know, in our schools. So Kate Champor explains, you know, how social emotional learning or the so SELs change the conversations from what's wrong with you to what happened and how everyone can begin to use these tools, use this as a tool, this SEL tool. So my Rahul here is a third grader, you know, an eight year old. So his parents had a huge ugly uh, argument that evening. So he was watching and fretting. Obviously children are very scared when, they, when the parents are fighting because they think that this, you know, this is the end of the world for them and for everybody. So that night he had a hard time sleeping. He tossed and he turned, so he got a you know, with his mom's yelling and he was terribly late for school. So he quickly gobbles down his breakfast and runs to catch a school bus, which he almost misses. The bus driver shouts at him to take a seat, seat quickly. He reaches schools and runs down the school gate, worrying if he carried his snack or the lunchbox. So he stops to open his bag and check. Gets late because that takes him maybe three to four minutes. Now the front lay office lady, she yells at him, you know, to run up to his class because he's already late. He runs down the school hallway and enters his classroom. Bang. The teacher looks at him long and says, hello, Rahul, is this the time to come in? You are late. Come on now, quickly, turn in your homework. Ah, uh, he had forgotten to do it. He throws his bag, he stomps his feet and says, oh no. The teacher looks horrified and says, this is not how you enter the classroom. Then throw your bag and show me that exasperation. Your meter went, your, you know, your anger meter went from zero to 10 in just few seconds. I will march you to the principal's office right now. So now Rahul is on his way to the principal's office. Sitting at the principal's office, the teacher tells the principal, so I don't know, you know, what's wrong with him. He has, you know, had a terrible meltdown in, you know, in front of the class. His anger shot from zero to 10 in just five seconds flat. What does the principal say? You want to put it in your chats? Let me see. What does the principal say? All right, the principal says, what's wrong with you, Rahul? Now, two things here. It's not what's wrong with Rahul. It is what happened to Rahul. Rahul didn't come to the class calm, happy, or emotionally stable. 
he was not at the zero level of his barometer or his pressure point, right? He was already at eight when he walked into the class. It reached 10. Why? On how the teacher addressed him. It could also have come down, don't you think? Now, what was the difference? Yes, what and how the teacher asked him. So we need to shift our mindsets from, you know, what's wrong with you to what happened to you. Not only in our conversations, you know, with children, nevertheless, nevertheless with adults around too. So question in the story is how many, <clears throat> you know, sorry, adults were living with what's wrong with your mindset here. You can start writing, you can, you know, put it on the chat. How many adults in this story uh, said what's wrong with you, had that what's wrong with your mindset? <clears throat> yes, it was the dad, right? It was the mom. Then it was a bus driver, the front desk, um, you know, the receptionist. It was the teacher and the principal. So there were six people in the chain who contributed to, you know, one eight-year-old's Rahul's outburst or a meltdown, and not one of them understood him. So how much easier and successful could Rahul's morning have been if instead of what's wrong with you, they were operating on what happened mindset? Right. So just think about these emotional mental stresses, the chronic neglect, you know, childhood stresses of children when they face long, strong emotional, physical abuse, chronic neglect or mental illnesses, you know, exposure to violence at times. However, with our adequate, you know, with our support, our adult support and understanding of SELs social emotional learning and social emotional competencies, these toxic stresses will have lifetime successful changes in a child's brain development. We can change the, the you know, the likelihood, the higher likelihood of men mental illnesses, you know, in our children to a minimal or to negligible as they grow. So when Rahul had an outburst, or we can say that meltdown he had, he threw his bag it wasn't that he was being mean or he was lashing out at anybody, but it was probably the biological adaptation that allowed him to cope up with you know, such situations each time at home and survive that long, all right? So that's how he has survived that long uh, by having these, um, you know, this biological adaptation. So again, it's not what's wrong with you, but what happened to you. So without support, childhood toxic stresses leads to chronic health problems and they last a lifetime. Remember, if it is reversed, we will contribute to building life successes for children at every step. So when we are saying building life uh, successes for children, you know, through uh, social emotional learning, it's us who are doing it, right? It's, it's, uh, it's only because of us, these, uh, we build these successful life uh, stories for them. Now, now that we know that we can predict that, we can also prevent it and we can contribute to building life success stories for children. So what I mean by SEL, let's define it, okay? The social emotional learning, of course, I know most of you know about it, but you know, just let me define it for you. It is a process through which adults and children acquire and apply the knowledge, the attitudes and skills necessary to understand and manage emotions, right? Now set and achieve the positive goals, feel and show empathy for others, right? And um, establish and maintain positivity and make responsible decisions, right? That's all what it leads to. Now, 
So I will take you through the slide quickly uh, because otherwise this is a whole workshop in itself. This is Castle's circle of SEL, social emotional learning. So I'm referring to uh, you know something that's inside the circle that are your five core competencies and where are the places we need to apply it. So in the first reign, um, this note in our curriculum, you know, in our instructional design, that what we teach them in the class. The second ring in your school policies and your practices, right? So third is your family, your community. All of us are a part of it, right? So the new eight skills required for our children uh, as printed by the World Economic Forum. And most of us also know about it. Uh, the new eight skills employers uh, will be looking for is, you know, it starts with cognitive flexibility, negotiation skills, service orientation, judgment and decision making, emotional intelligence, coordinating with others, people management, creativity, critical thinking, and complex problem solving. Now tell me, friends, which one of these are related to SEL and which ones through the academic nourishment we we do every day, we teach the three hours, right? Which of it is teaching them that, uh, you know, uh, the three hours is teaching them these, these skills. So just a thought uh, for you all to, to go through this in your, in your mind. Yes, and this is the reality. So we need to consciously go back to shifting the mindsets. And that is what, you know, we need to change <clears throat> what's wrong with you to what happened to you. This is the same for all of us as adults as well. So many adults carry that childhood toxic stress with them. So it may manifest in their own behavior adaptations. And sometimes those behaviors don't you know, align with what this society says is normal. That's okay. So when we see adults doing that, we may sometimes get upset with them. We are sometimes jumping into a judgment, thinking what's wrong with them? and not think what happened for that behavior to manifest. So however, not all of us have an opportunity to, you know, to hone our SEL tools to build. So let's build on that toolbox. So there are many ways individually and, uh, you know, and as a community, we can build these tools and keep them sharp. Put them in your toolbox, right? They are important. So looking around, people in the community are the stakeholders also of SELs, right? Or social emotional learning. And we are all a part of that community. So ultimately it starts with all of us. I have another story where uh, it's a story of Bacha or Basha, you can call him. So uh, that's his success story, what success means to him. And so what success meant to his teachers and to people around him. He may be in one of your classes. Or we may know one, you know, one such Basha around us. At first, Basha, you know, he refused to participate in, in any meetings, you know, with his counselors, with his teachers. So he would completely sit with his back to his teachers, you know, to his counselors in all his meetings. He never faced them. So he stood out for all the wrong reasons. That's what, you know, it was like he was always caught in a fight. He was not coming to school or coming late to class, not writing, you know, for all those wrong reasons, uh, 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 which are, are not wrong, actually. So because we have, uh, you know, instead of saying that what happened, we went to what's wrong, right? So uh, he refused all the interventions in the beginning and he didn't turn up to school. To most of the days he did. So, uh, but, uh, you know, the, uh, his counselors, his teacher, the school was very persistent or was, you know, they went on talking to him and they would follow up uh, with him regularly, whether he was sitting with his back to, to them, they were still constantly talking to him. So, however, uh, you know, a couple of weeks later, after constant communication, he turned up and faced his peers, although he didn't still speak up. You know, he was just there. So over the course of the year, it, it took him that long, right? He learned new skills and translated these across the school campus. He now had the ability to manage and identify in the world when, you know, that whole, uh, you know, uh, 
that, that so much of emotions that came with the pressures of performing academically and socially for him. But he managed, right? He managed because he had the support, he had the adult support. And Basha was then in school more often. His grades went up and he reported having more friends. Isn't that beautiful? And this is what SEL can do. You know, it, it is building success. It is building, uh, you know, uh, life success for each child for one at a time, one step at a time, each child at a time. Now, SEL, um, you know, works um, and not just for Basha, but also for all students. We've already seen that, you know, studies have shown that SEL improves mental health and behavior. It'll, it boosts children's social competence and creates more uh, positive school climates. It does all good things that can lead to build life successes for children. Now, let me cite an academic success, uh, success example. So, you know, what SEL does, uh, you know, for, for children to also attain academic success. So one research in Loyola University, Chicago, did an analysis of 213 students looking at uh, or who were in a SEL implementation program. They found that students who received direct social emotional learning gained an average of 11% in the standardized achievement tests compared to the peers who didn't take part. Now, this is huge. So as research says before SEL, educators saw that just a four to five percent increase. And what's more, these schools reported reduced conduct issues, right? Behavior issues with children with emotional distress too. These students were less likely to experience depression, you know, engage in, in, in drug use or even contemplate suicides. So that's the power of SEL, and that's how we can, you know, we are building success uh, stories. Now, through SEL's social emotional learning, we need to create socially emotionally skilled children, right, who excel not only in academics, but also communication, perseverance, grit, empathy, and caring, eventually building life uh, successes for children at every step, not you know, uh, that finally they've got, you know, they have been successful in life or they've, they've built this life success, but it has to be at every step, right? So one of the most important skills taught through SEL is the ability to connect, you know, with other people, the social connection. Let's be honest. We work harder for people and organizations. We are connected to emotionally, right? So, uh, we uh, also do a lot of volunteer work for organizations that we are uh, you know, emotional about or we are emotionally connected to. So we are more likely to show to school or to work when we feel connected to people who are there. So I think uh, you, know, you all need to write down something here because uh, you know, a comment and we, will, uh, we can discuss that uh, you know, after the presentation is over. So friends, uh, we discussed you know, many special dots today. So imagine if each one of these children, we heard stories of Rahul, we heard stories of Jackie, we had stories of Basha, of Anmol, and our grandfather. You know, they're all, they, you, know, th you know, they're all a special dot and they would come together with all other dots to create the fabric of your class. Right. So um, probably we can, uh, you know, there's something called uh, a six handshake. So each one person touches a six in the world. So imagine if you know, we have a story of Rahul and his success. Today we are talking about his success as well on this forum. So if he, his story touches six of, uh, of us here and you six talk about it. So, uh, you know, imagine that kind of that the, the special dot that we are we are creating in this world. Right. So all and all these dots. So all of us are dots here because we are also doing the SEL here Matt, today. In Nicola, revision yeah, I think it's a uh, yeah. There is one more person who's uh, got the audio on. So can you please mute yourself? So you know all these dots when they come together with all other dots to create the fabric of your class you know, your school. Imagine your society, our country and the world. What kind of a country and world would we have? 
building life success, what it means for every child at every step. So these special dots who are learning SELs are more special than the others. They're more compassionate, they're more empathetic, they're more kind, you know, they're problem solvers, they're innovators. So what are we waiting for? Let's connect these dots, you know, into a wave, an unstoppable wave of change, evolving every day, every month, every year with social and emotional learning, right? And when these are, uh, sorry, yeah, so when and when these children turn 18, we will see a systematic and generational change in the mindsets and skill sets of an entire nation of the world. Are we still worried about the post pandemic era and building life successes for our children and adults too? For in a world where we are emphasizing on SELs, you know, on social emotional learning, we can't think of anything but feel good and optimistic about it, right? So for all of us, you know, our memories in school is not connected to the uh, to decimals that we learned or we learned multiplications and fractions, but it is to people, to social connections like friends. You know, uh, for me, it's uh, like a friend who helped me climb the stairs when I had a fracture, when I had a fracture or the chewing gum that was stuck on my school desk. And when I know I was desperately trying to remove it before the teacher comes in or, uh, and, you know, my friends did that. Or my teacher who helped me get up and run with me uh, up to the finishing line after I was pushed down, you know, in a hundred meters race. All your memories are also tied to social connections. If, if you are reminded of something, why don't you, you know, you can share it with us uh, at the end of uh, this presentation. They should be, right? School should be social places, right? In the times that we are all going through or we are in, I'm reminded of recommendations by our ECN APER for strong social connections, recommending home-based learning activities and not paused learning. Those which have a parent to a child connection is what we talk about. A child to teacher connection, learning should be a social process. We need to provide our children with social nourishment and not just academic rigor. So um, I will be, you know, summing uh, this up for all of y'all. Um, so we spoke about, you know, the grandfather's priority for his grandkids, uh, which is not successful career, riches, not even health, but the ability to get, uh, get up every time they fall. That ability is possible to give the, uh, you know, to these children through SELs, to build those competencies in children and adults alike. SEL can provide every person with a skill to flourish and fulfill their life's potential. It creates children who can communicate, show perseverance, show grit, show empathy and caring, thereby building each child's life success, right? So I'd like to discuss this. Uh, it just takes a small pebble to ripple a whole pond. Some pebbles you can carry with you to change mindsets. And you can do that, you know, as you carry each pebble. I have my three pebbles here with me and I usually carry them everywhere. Uh, so you can take uh, a deep breath, you know, before, uh, you know, Ekasha Anjo can be, uh, you know, have you muted. Right. So uh, you can take three deep breaths and think about what pebble you want to toss in the pond, because we know only one small, it just takes one pebble to, you know, ripple the whole pond. So the first could be self-care. Keep in mind, you know, it's self-care, right? Self-acceptance. And only if you accept yourself, it's, you know, you will accept others and appreciate others. So appreciate, uh, you know, yourself. Uh, remember the mirror uh, activity and, you know, which, uh, which you would uh, uh, do it uh, today after this uh, presentation is over second pebble could be you know for your family and friends and getting more mindful in and around our homes and communities so third pebble and you take three breaths you know three deep breaths and uh, what pe you know what pebble will you toss into your pond to create a ripple think about it what you want to change so this third pebble is yours for to change something uh, because you know we breathe 
because we just take breathing for granted. You know, we, we breathe without even thinking about it. Think, and when we start thinking about each breath, something changes in us and around us. Likewise, when we pause to consider what is really going on with people around us, some things become remarkably clear, you know, like a Rahul, like an Anmol, like a Jackie and a Bacha. So childhood trauma can affect a person's entire life, that which leads to building life success or life breakdown for the child. Although shifting to how we respond to others, you know, makes a big difference to individuals and our whole society, changing the conversation, be mindful about it. You know, uh, Fatima could uh, very well you know, tell all those, that group of uh, teachers, uh, you know, in the school who could not connect, right? Because uh, they had a power cut. So she didn't say, what's wrong with you? She said, what happened to you that you're unable to join us, right? And they, you know, they've made that effort to join us back and they're still making that effort to do that. So we all have, you know, this, if we keep this, what happened to you, the, which is our biggest tool, we have all of it in our toolbox, along with self-care, empathy and social nourishment, we will keep building life successes, you know, not only for children, for adults, but for ourselves uh, as well. So just a sec. So just a sec meaning just social emotional competencies, teachers, social emotional competencies work. And let's make SELs work for you, make it work for your family, make it work for your friends. And most of all, change a generation of children who are with us right now and step by step build life successes for them each day one child each day you know one at a time so again just a set teachers and parents uh, it's all in our hands so thank you so much and uh, i'll stop sharing here but if you have any questions i'm open to it thank you Fatima, yeah. Thank you, Kusum. That was brilliant. And I think what you have uh, beautifully explained to the teachers is through examples. Uh, love the stories. And I think if teachers can just use whatever strategies you have used to skill us, that would be a great starting point. So don't get ahead of yourself. I think, Kusum, ma'am, that's important. Uh, the, the narrative. I think Rahul's story has touched me immensely. Uh, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, Kusum ma'am, but if these teachers can actually have little mini orientations with parents explaining the very same stories that you have shared, it just puts the parents in a different, I think uh, one of the participants pointed out every adult had failed the child. Yeah, Absolutely. So, I would also like to read the chats because yes, uh, that will be really nice. Yeah. Yes. I think your, and, I think your stories really put it together like you rightly pointed out we read all of this yeah but you know often it gets lost in translation mm -hmm. I think your pebbles are uh, the you know the, your, your pebbles one is my favorite and I think that uh, really helps even with teachers uh, principals yeah. bonding with teachers yes, it's not absolutely. just the children uh, I think maybe uh, Kusumam if you can just uh, dwell on that that it's it's also about our communities of parents right. teachers and children Absolutely, absolutely it is. So uh, SELs are, uh, <clears throat> it's first for us, you know, that's the reason we say that we need to use it, uh, you know, for ourselves. So, uh, and when I gave it an example of appreciating ourselves, you know, of Jackie's story, because she, uh, she didn't want to look at herself, you know, in the mirror. So when she saw herself, she she said, I like myself, you know, and that life can can change to love. And that's how when she started appreciating because that was the, uh, the lesson, um, uh, you know, that was one of the first lessons um, of SEL uh, in, in that school. And uh, so, she, you know, they were able to, uh, uh, she, uh, she was able to get that success for herself. 
and uh, so I think it's, it's a beautiful story which we can all uh, apply for ourselves. That's one of the reasons I've, you know, I'm asking, uh, you know, everyone who's here, present here, just take that mirror, do that exercise today for your own self, you know, stand in front of that mirror or stand in front of your own mirror at home and talk to yourself, look at yourself. How many times do we look at ourselves and appreciate ourselves, right? We don't. So, uh, so I think that is uh, being self-aware. So most of us in our, uh, even in our early years, the foundation years curriculum, we do have the self-talk, you know, for our children, which uh, at, you know, at times you're doing even corporate trainings where we are talking, we are telling them, okay, look at yourself. Have you ever looked at yourself? Look at yourself. And this we are doing, uh, you know, for children who are just toddlers or for children who are in kindergartens. So that's so important. So first it applies to ourselves. Right. And first, uh, uh, so, you know, it, it all applies to ourselves, the strength, character, the skills for resilience, you know, uh, you know, what we have, a warm toughness, what we say. Um, and also when we are, when we look at schools as a social process, it's not about like I'm saying that, you know, we are connected to organizations. We are connected to ECA APER because of the emotional connection that we have. Right. And so it's the same with us, uh, you know, if, if you look at our, um, <clears throat> sorry, our childhood days. So I don't remember the multiplication. I don't remember the decimals. I definitely remember, you know, a friend of mine who helped me go, climb up the stairs when I had a fracture, right? Or uh, when I talked about that, the chewing gum thing. I um, love the chewing know, gum yes, example, yes, because that's so, so, that's so real that, you know, you remember those things. Yes. Uh, and I think it's important for us to celebrate that, Kusum ma'am. I think we forget right. in our quest for these academic targets. Right. You've touched, uh, 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 you know, you also spoke about world affairs, Kusum ma'am. You know, we often think that these are little children and they won't understand, but they are exactly. receiving information. So maybe you want to talk a little bit about it. Do you think you can break information? I mean, you know, racism, abuse, every day we're listening to something in the newspaper that's scary, including coronavirus. Absolutely. Can you just, uh, you know, guide us a little bit about, yeah, is it relevant? Should we break it down? Is it important for us to do it? So it is important because as it is, we are talking around them, right? Mm -hmm. the, our news channels are on and we are talking, we are worried even during these times, right? But we are not explaining to the child as to what's happening. You know, mm -hmm. so it's, it's very important to break down that news because we think he doesn't understand, but he does. You know, during our online classes, there are lots of parents who feel, oh, no, you know, I can't attend these classes. You know, why are you starting the physical classrooms? Because, you know, my child is moving uh, all the time that, you know, you're doing activities or you're, you're teaching something or you're, they're singing rhymes. But the, the very fact is that that running child here and there who's running around his drawing room or his, his, his hallway is listening, everything. And when it is the day for him to speak out, he's just blurting it out. So we've had uh, emotional breakdowns of parents who are saying, oh, we didn't know this. You know, my child is hearing everything. So, you know, that's what uh, we all as adults need to understand. Children hear, they listen, and uh, we need to process for them. You know, we need to talk it out to them and tell them, you know, what's happening around the world and why they shouldn't be scared because we have put down our fears thinking that, you know, all, all right, he doesn't understand, it's, it's quite okay, but they do. And who's counseling them? Who's talking to them? We as adults are talking to each other. We are, you know, we say, okay, uh, you know, the mental stresses and things like that. Who's talking to the small children, right? So it's very, very important. And if we, if we are listening to worldviews, if we are listening to what's happening around the world, I think the child has every right to know as well. And I, I think that's the role of the educators to try and uh, break it down to their level. Of course, you're not going to deep dive into Absolutely. science, but I think it's important to orient. And I think the, the bad story, uh, Kusum ma'am, if all the educators here and those who are going to watch this YouTube as well, critical. Uh, I think that story in itself, that activity in itself uh, is huge. Um, on a scale of one to 10, Kusum ma'am, if you were to do a lesson plan, where would you put, how much of it would you uh, attach importance to it? Uh, you know, if I could ask you to actually break it down into percentage out of hundred, sorry, not one to 10. <laughs> the SELs you say? Yes. Yes. Yeah, for me, it's hundred percent. So, uh, yeah, it is hundred percent. So, um, so I don't know if I can ever build that kind of school or you know do something like that way. But yes, it's still there in my mind. 
And I would like to do that. Yeah. yeah. So, so uh, all those who've tuned in, of course, and those who are going to watch this later, one of the things that I think uh, uh, Kusum Ma'am represents is that empathy, is that compassion, and she draws like-minded people. That's important as well. If you don't have it, if you don't exercise it, and I think you make a conscious effort to, to practice it as well. Always, yeah. So that's a lesson for you all. You have to work at it. It's not going to be just one of those lessons and you forget. You It's work in progress. Kind of like the backstory, kind of like the yeah, yeah. effect. True. So brilliant. Thank you so much, Kusum Ma'am. There's been a lot of uh, appreciation for you. Uh, lots of examples given. Uh, I'm going to request all of them to email us uh, uh, questions, queries, and those are going to be directed mm -hmm. to you as always. But thank you so much for a wonderful session. As always, a house of information, always something new to learn. I've made my notes as well, and I hope everyone mm -hmm. else has. Thank you so much for uh, kickstarting uh, the <laughs> APA workshop. Uh, as always, charming and articulate Kusum Kanwar signing off. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.